We're talking about reboots. Reboots. Welcome back to the Red River Horror Podcast. I'm your host, Joe Zakreski, joined by Eddie Kayazo. Hi, Ed. How are you? Doing well, Joe. You know what it's time for. Oh, what is it? It's the first ever dueling movie review. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Don't shoot me. Don't shoot. Ah. Ah. Oh. God. <laughs> <laughs> that's right <laughs> it's the first ever dueling movie reviews all right and the movie we are talking about is the reboot of wrong turn ding 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 2021 2021 and the thing that makes me excited to talk about this is that when when was the first time i saw the trailer for it, it was a uh, fall I believe it was the last uh, i think it was in december of 2020 december yeah when you were we were kind of like wrapping the year up and what was supposed to come out what didn't yep. come out and that's what was right coming and then i, I remember talk, talking about it on here and then with you outside of here being like dude this this looks like a pretty legit yeah, I, I was not on the podcast the week you were talking about right. it, and I listened, and you're like, oh, I'm going to watch this Wrong Turn trailer. Yeah. And, and you're like, whoa, okay, this looks pretty good. So then, of course, I think we talked about the, the whole story. I yep. was just like, hey, dude, should I watch this? You're like, yes. Yeah. So I did. Yeah, And you know what? You know what it was is I think it might have been a little right after The Cannibal. Yeah, I think so. Well, maybe. Probably right around there. And... The the thing is with the original 2003 wrong turn that sparked five five sequels. Yeah. A lot of, you know, straight to DVD action. I, you know, I, I was not a big fan of the first one. So I can tell you that straight up is like, I mean, I, I wanted to like it, but it was basically just the Hills Have Eyes, which was also a reboot around the same time as 2003 2004 when was that that hills of has I, I think hills have eyes was a little bit later than that the reboot but yeah you were always a hills have eyes fan i was so maybe you had expectations for wrong turn going in because you and i this we, we've talked about this place before mm -hmm. this is one of the ones one of the last movies we saw at amc andorra 8 yeah and if, you know, for someone, if you haven't seen it in a long time, one of the, the big selling points for it at the time was the actress Eliza Dushku. <laughs> right. Uh, so she was the big name behind it. And a lot of barbed wire, a lot, yes. of, a lot of gore, and, of course, cannibalism. And so going into this one, I'm expecting the, the one scene, I'm like, okay, like in the trailer where the guy gets pulled by the chain, I'm like, well, this looks a lot cooler than just doing like barbed wire all over the place like yep. all right that's cool like trap like you know this could be neat and uh my one concern right off the bat was like oh like is that going to be the coolest scene was shown in the trailer you know how that happens in oh, movies absolutely. a lot absolutely not the case not the case at all no no mm -hmm. so g getting back to that wrong turn 2003 for me you and i saw this together mm -hmm. both in agreement weren't huge fans no um didn't really know of the the back backwoods uh, subgenre of horror slasher films wasn't uh, you know like the deliverance types <laughs> I guess yeah. to put it like I didn't really know about that subgenre I know horror fans are there are a portion of horror fans that are big fans of that I heard wrong turn wrong turn 2 is actually pretty good but yes we saw wrong turn 2021 the trailer could have been a letdown there was something a little bit different about this trailer the the, the image was elevated the mm -hmm. the it was presented a whole lot better than that 2003 yes. wrong turn where both you and I were like, yeah, we should probably watch this and talk about it. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. And with some things um, that I get excited for and let down, I'm going to tell you right now that this is definitely not one of them. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay, because the thing is, uh, this the first ever dueling movie reviews. It's going to be a special segment we do every now and then for yeah. movies like this. And Joe and I have not talked to each other at all since both we watched this separately the other night. Mm -hmm. Didn't say a word. Nope. And now we're talking about the, it. The only word I said to you was there was one scene that I couldn't get out of my head. Yes. Like it just wouldn't go away. It's 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 spent a night with me okay. in my dreams. Like it. Um, even when the review's out onto Red River Horror, there's a, a line that I use in my write-up that just is straight nightmare fuel. Oh, oh I'm excited about that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm curious if you can guess which scene it is, because guess what this episode's going to be loaded with? 
spoilers yeah yeah <laughs> if you're tuning into the movie the dueling movie reviews mm-hmm. for red river horror uh yes there will be plenty yeah. of spoilers ahead there's going to be a piece that accompanies this both yeah. joe and i have assigned the film a boat rating and just to explain the review system if you have not been on redriverhorror.com yet you should because there's a lot of great film reviews from the great stacy lane wilson yes but how red river horrors system works is it's zero to five Zero to five rating, right? No halves. No halves. So if it's a zero, we're talking films like Thanks Killing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like it's reverse Dave Portnoy's pizza reviews, where if you use a full number, that's an amateur score. We don't. That's our pro score. Right. One through five. No BS. Mm-hmm. So, and that's one thing with this movie where I would have like when we like the only thing I talked to you about was like considering a half, but we're not doing halves. We are not doing half. So. And this one, to me, would it was hard for me. I would have gone with a half if that's how our system worked. Yeah. But we set a standard. And yeah. we got to, we got to, because cause eventually when there's enough reviews from a certain person on the site, then you get an aggregate score of, of uh, their review system. Yeah. So you had already mentioned it, and I didn't mean to interrupt you. So wrong turn 2021. 2021. Lived up, lived up to the trailer? I exceeded. Wow. Not only did it live up to it, it exceeded the trailer. And right off the bat follows the lost, like the whole, okay, we're in a small town USA with the creepy townspeople, you know, don't go back there. Like (laughs) played that formula to a T like, you know, is exactly set up how a 2021 horror movie would be. You have, you know, your standard heterosexual (laughs) white couple. You have your interracial couple. You have a gay couple. Right. This is how we do things now. And naturally. And that's fine. That's kind of been a thing in horror movies forever. It's been like kind of mixing up the couples that are on there. It's not that, but like, of course, you know, there had to be the racist white dudes in the town, the stars and bars, all that stuff. It's like, okay. Horror has always done that. I thought the setup was pretty standard. Very standard. And I'm like, okay. By the book. So it's like, at first you're like, well, all right. You you know, whatever. Um, Before, I'll cover the issue, the only like my downsides to it. So let me praise it first. (laughs) That's how we'll do this. I'll 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 give you my praise and then let me know what you think. Okay. So there's that. It it follows it by the, you know, by the book, Lost in the Woods, whatever. Perfect. Um, what really impressed me about this movie is how clever a lot of the writing was and a lot of the story is Hmm. because it's not typical to what wrong turn 2003 was it was as if they read like knew that movie watched it and said you know how this could be better and then Ah. did just that so no spoiler right off the bat the cannibalism thing gone yes off the table it's... which i was very happy about yep instead we're introduced to a group called the foundation and the foundation is a group of people who stayed in the hills of Vir- mountain of uh, the appalachian trail and parts of it's virginia right just regular virginia not west virginia uh this one was regular virginia it was regular yeah. virginia yeah so they're on the appalachian trail and these people is right before the civil war started and they say we're not we're start we're the foundation of you know this new society we're not going to be a part of this bickering it's like that's cool but you know they don't like people going on their land nope also like hey and and so you you catch that vibe that it's going to be like oh this kidnapping cannibal type thing and those initial first chases in the woods that chain pull that's in the trailer awesome the first death is awesome yes it is the first death is great agree with you there and then um you the second kill like when they kill one of the foundation members Mm -hmm. really good you have a bit of a twist in there where you think the one girl might be a part of it if you remember the girl with the glasses disappears you and then it comes what? back. So it had like, so there, it started playing games. And this is fast. This is right into the movie. Yeah. You just get an introduction to who the people are going to be. And then it gets right into it. It does. Which, again, point, points. That's a big plus for me. Mm. Don't fluff. Just get right into it. Yeah. 
But I was shocked by the the ending runtime. It was almost two hours by the end. But when we get to the downsides of the film, that's going to be for, one of them for me. The runtime because I thought it was supposed to end like three times. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that has its ups and downs too. So like, so then you get to this thing where it's you know first kills great, second kills great, late, and then when they're finally caught, and then we're being in the third kills. There's a lot of great kills. Mm-hmm. If for a slasher film, I mean, I guess it, it the the root subgenre is slasher, right? You would, would I would you call say it? so. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, what makes it like the. I mean, we can just talk about it straight up on this. If you haven't watched it, please. We'll, we're going to light up social media saying watch it before you listen to this episode, and even keep this in your back pocket if you got to put it off, and then listen to it after you watch it and join join the combo with us. Yes. So that first kill is, I don't know. It had to have been them, the giant you know log oh yeah barreling down the hill i took that as and yes spoiler great first kill man maybe this should have been spoiler free because this is so good um th- when you watch the trailer and you see the log rolling down yeah. that payoff is great and yeah. what i took from that just to interject real quick what i took away from that was that's a way to keep people the hell away from you from the foundation yeah so I don't know if the intent is just like, yeah, let's kill a mass amount of people, but stay the F off my mountain. Yeah, it's it's you don't come up here. This is our land. And later um, you find out that they do it. They do it in three levels. So it's three. So you get the first traps, which aren't as dangerous. And then if you don't turn around then, then you're going to get to layer two. You get to layer three. You're fucked. Right. right. So you, you get a fair chance. And that here's the thing. Like you see that intro in the woods. It's like they're the one where they're being chased. They wake up. Well, we even forgot about that. Like they they get when they get lost overnight, they wake up in the graveyard. They do. Like that's creepy as hell with the shadows behind yeah. the tents and stuff. There's a lot of really good shots. <laughs> they're just so creepy right from the start. It's got a much more serious tone than your run of the mill slasher. Yeah. And the next the next step is is it's like, you know, when they're finally captured, it's like, oh, what are they gonna do to them? You're expecting cannibals. No. It's like it's weird. It's like a functioning society that's just separated from the, you know, the real world. Right. You know, kind of like you know, like tribes in Brazil that are off deep in the Amazon. They want to be left alone. Yep. So it's like that, but in America. And when they go to the lead. I'm trying. I can't remember the name of the leader. I'm drawing a blank. But either way, so they get brought to the leader, who says that they're on trial. Hmm. And it's like because the one guy who gets pulled by the chain, he does manage to escape and smashes one of their people's heads in. And they're like, yeah. "You're on trial for murder." And when he's giving his monologue, explaining, he's like, "We didn't do anything to you. <laughs> he stepped into our trap." And was knocked out, and they were carrying him back to give him treatment. And you smashed his face. You killed this man. Right. (laughs) And he did. Yeah. It's like, we killed him. It's like, we're not attacking you. You're invading our territory. Yep. You're trespassing. And you killed one of ours. So, and then they do the next death is that that guy who gets dragged by the chain gets an eye for an eye. Yep. Literally, they smash his face in, <laughs> and uh, the the others are punished. They say to darkness is what yeah. they call their punishment. Mm-hmm. So, if you are caught on their land, you get punished to what is called darkness. I don't know if it was so much just being on their land. Is that was that the takeaway? So you're that's you're- what I'm gathering. Where it's like it plays off like they're being civil. Yeah. And I think with that three layer warning thing, it's like once you get through the trespassing punishment is that darkness. It's like you better stop. But like you don't know what's going to happen to you. I guess he did offer them the option to join or face darkness. Well, no, I guess he didn't offer them that option. (laughs) He didn't offer it to them until the two, the couple, the the uh, the black guy and the white girl. Mm -hmm. uh, She was like, hey, he knows how to do this with the land and water and all that. Like, he has skills. It's like, you know, and then she offers herself to the leader. leader. He's more than happy to accept 
<laughs> yes. But that's not before their other friend actually faces faces the punishment that is known as darkness, which is essentially see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. Right. And what they did was is they took a hot iron <laughs> and they put it through his eyeballs, mm-hmm. his ears, and cut out his tongue. Yeah. And then he goes down into a pit. Yeah. Now, at first, I thought he was dead. He was not dead. He wasn't dead, no. No. So, during this time, one of the one of the issues with the movie is the, the timeline continuity. It's like, um, that was throwing me off because, like, the dad goes looking for her. And in the early scene, she talks to the dad, and then he's like, oh, it's been weeks. But it's like, you don't know that much time has passed. Right. So, either way, now, the girl who is the wife of the leader now, her dad is now going out and searching so it's like you know now you're getting like a second part an act two sure sure to the movie which i like it's almost like a reset yeah which you know when i'm when i'm hearing what you're saying with the ending is maybe yeah like that's kind of what made it drag was like adding this new storyline but it it had to be done it it did just to kind of follow through on the dad's story uh yes it it did have to be done it was just so so long (laughs) yeah so that's what so you have is now the dad's on on the hunt to yep. find his daughter. And the dad, by the way, that's the uh, the, the guy from Stranger Things, you know, like... Uh, yeah! Uh, oh, Seven? Is mm-hmm. that the character? Seven's, uh, like, what did I guess called? Father, doctor, whatever Keeper. the hell. Well, yeah, whatever. Wow. From from Cre- season one. Creator? With the white hair. Yeah. Guy in the lab coat. That's yeah. that's that guy. I'll, yeah. have to look, I'll have to look him up, but go ahead. So... I thought it was pretty cool because then he obviously he's on the hunt. He ends up in the small town and that's where it's like, you know, that there's the same part of that formula where there's a crooked sheriff who doesn't want any part of it. Like they know what goes on up there and they want you out of there. Yeah. And then there's those, those group of townies who don't want outsiders in their town and boy, how do you do? They beat the shit out of him. Yes, they did. Yes. <laughs> and and you learn later that those are for good intentions. But you know, aside from the dad hunt, I'm just going to say it is like that whole darkness thing. That's what scared the shit out of me and stayed with me. Really? Yeah. Now, the darkness thing, was it the act of burning out his eyes? Because that's more, I, I don't know. I saw whatever version was available to rent. Right on Prime um, or on Google. Uh, I actually did Redbox on Redbox. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, but yes. So I don't know if that's unrated, rated R. I don't because it was straight to. I I don't know if it had a theatrical release. Maybe it did. I don't know. I think it might have been straight to the. Str- I think maybe it might be in some theaters, but um, you know how things are. So so what I'm saying is, was it was it when he actually put the poker in his eyes, or when she found him on her way out? The second one. Oh yeah. That's what got me. Yeah. It's the first one I thought he was dead. Right. So let's beat around the bush because it's, there's a lot of story with the dad going to find it. It's it's funny when he's like pays like, a you know, two dudes, like a father-son combo who know the woods, like the back of their hands. Sure. And he pays them money to take him, you know, escort him safely to wherever the foundation is. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, he's wearing like all that neon like bright colors <laughs> like what are you wearing <laughs> it was good i wasn't but. seeing that i i didn't wasn't seeing the town creepy what you would think would be racist white guy mm-hmm. wasn't see, i didn't see that coming that tw- little twist you yeah know, so there's a few twists that was one of them like oh they're trying to help they're really tr- like yeah. no like really stay off the mountain because like these people will kill you yeah that's <laughs> i mean yeah you learn that is like they beat the shit out of the dad they intimidated the other group just to say get out of here like do not go up there and because they've pretty much you hear from some of them they've pretty much all lost a family member right who wandered yeah yeah and then just to we'll just like when he when the dad gets close when like you know his two guides get killed by one of the traps Mm -hmm. that's where we learn that there's three traps but it's like when he gets taken in and you see how uh was i think his name was it lawrence 
Larence. Let me let me look up the, the uh, either way, things. but it's yeah. like you know now they're fully integrated like into the society. Right. And he's even like yapping his trap and then his own daughter shoots him in the arm with an arrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, we don't play the, they don't play these games. Right. Like, that was cool. Like how they, like, you know, it's hard to describe in words how it's like these camera angles that they use for like little things like that. When she shoots him, it's like you see her through the crack mm. of some wood. And then, psh, right, a lot of really good imagery. I, you know, I it was it was a quality film experience. Yeah, I was not expecting that at all. I was not expecting the trailer could make you believe that it was going to be that, but it's like okay, but it's still it's called Wrong Turn. Mm-hmm. They're venturing into the woods. Yeah, but it's a better it's a better wrong turn. Yeah. Where they're not yes. these aren't they aren't a cannibalistic people. They're like you stay away. Like it was making me think about that kid, the missionary who tried to get onto that island off the coast of India and got killed. Oh, <laughs> right. Because they don't like people coming there. And that's what these people are. Except that one sick thing that they do, which we learn so like, you know, the daughter is you know apparently the leader's wife but it's like clearly like you know she's gonna make her move so she fucks him he falls asleep yep and now she's gonna go rescue daddy Mm -hmm. and her former boyfriend is not interested he's gonna stay he's he's gone he's staying with the foundation which was made it creepy his beard was real thick and he's just like these people see me it's like but he wasn't stopping her no no he didn't and and i thought it would have been interesting if he did that's what I thought was going to happen for a second. I was like, when is he going to come around and she has to like kill him or something? But that, I guess, like you said, one of the negatives, just like, okay, timeline, like would he, would he really have time to grow like a beard like that? Apparently. By the time the Appar- dad. It must've been like a month. I okay. think it was like four to six weeks. Okay. So were you saying Darius? Uh, Darius. That's it. The, the guy who, uh, the black guy, the white girl, uh, pretty much the main the couple the yeah. main couple yeah so jen played by charlotte right. vega she's she's the like the, the final girl whatever it is yeah um but her love interest is uh darius, darius. played by a dane bradley yeah so. and you know what they did a good job <laughs> yeah the cast did a great job they I mean, did it, it, if it was a straight to dvd if it would have been straight to dvd it wouldn't feel like it mm-hmm. i mean just this the cinematography was great the writing this i love how clever it was like that trial scene i'm gonna say it again yeah. where it's like we didn't do anything and they didn't no like he laid it out it's like and it's like oh you're starting to feel for him until you learn what darkness is which is during the escape where you see one of the people one of the citizens of the foundation walking with this girl who has no eyes yeah <laughs> and he's like dragging her along and you know, what you learn is what they do with these people in darkness who survive is they pretty much just rape them and do whatever they want with them. Yeah. Oh, really? That's what he was going to do. Yeah. Oh. See, I just thought that. Yeah, I guess. Because I'm- remember when she, so she is making the escape. Yes. And then the one guy jumps on top of her during like the getaway. Mm-hmm. And he says, he's like, I'm going to make you my wife once you're in darkness. Right right you know yeah yeah Oof. creepy right yes that's what like it's just like oh my and like here's the thing if you're one of those people you can't see you can't hear and can't speak right like all you can do is grunt and feel do you think like, that's a nightmare the, the the person that was part of their group when they ventured into the woods that's now in darkness that she finds and you know, puts out of his misery. Yeah. Uh, do you think when he looked at her, even though he obviously couldn't see her or hear her, do you think he knew? I th- that's what I was trying to pick up because it's like, I don't know if he must have like, you know, I'm, like you see the others that are down there are just like clutched against the walls. Yeah. Like feeling around. Mm-hmm. And he's like in that corner and he's like, I thought he was like eating something. He's like nibbling on his hand. Oh man. Like 
this is this is the part that just gave me the the heebie-jeebies yeah it was uncomfortable no question like he's just sitting there just like nibbling on himself with like those burnout eyeballs and i think it's like when it might have been like the smell or the fact that like that like stopped so he was like kind of like aware yeah but that's that's the scene that i mean that i mean i I could i guess you could say gave me a nightmare Mm. i couldn't get it out of my head I, i was more upset about that i was pretty upset and yeah. that that was that was yeah not yeah. not right um <laughs> to put it in perspective i would trade places with his boyfriend any day of the week okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> so his boyfriend's the one who gets killed by the log first yes. kill <laughs> yes and it's like i remember like when uh, me and mal me and mal were watching it and it's just oh like, mal watched she, it yeah she's oh. just like she's like oh i'm just like i'm like well the way the rest of this movie's gonna go i'm gonna guess that's probably the best way to go out if you're gonna go out (laughs) right right (laughs) (laughs) and uh it was yes yeah i think so so i mean that's you know the first the first little twists i thought were the girl with the glasses you know where she wasn't there Mm -hmm. when the stuff first started going down and then she reappears but then that gets squashed right away because she falls into that pit yeah <laughs> yeah, some, yeah that was a good one too i mean I, I the almost, special effects are great on it too like just this a lot of good things in this movie so her death that's it her death specifically i guess is a little bit forgettable because of what happens on the front end the back end of this yeah. story yeah she's she's like thrown there in the middle and it's like it's not as memorable because now it's just hitting me now it's like during that log scene when it's coming down it's like her boyfriend splits off and then she's freaking out i'm like you left me you left me yeah yeah and then it comes down a scene where she falls in this pit and she's got spikes going through her, and she's like don't leave me and he's like i'm fucking out of here <laughs> <laughs> so he was he was naturally the asshole of the group adam yeah played by dylan mctee and his girlfriend mila or mila i don't know emma dumont so good job guys yeah i mean they they delivered <laughs> yeah it they was delivered but they did this is you know this whole escape thing through the, you know getting out of the foundation uh they did a great job making it feel like it was helpless because at one point during that i'm just like oh like we haven't seen the leader appear yet mm-hmm. while she's trying to escape so it's clear that like they're going to get close and then they're going to get caught and maybe they set up for a sequel or something. And that's when the town people appear like those redneck guys with yeah. their guns. And they're like, they're like, what are you doing? Like, you know, at first, like imagine being in the middle of that. It's like, they just beat the crap out of the dad. They scared her. And then it's like, they're like, no, no, no. We know what goes on up here. That's why we, be, you know, we wanted you to leave. It's like, we couldn't have just told him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Just to, just give him a strong verbal warning, yeah. And then when he didn't listen, like when yeah. he's getting in his vehicle, it's like, no, I'm warning you. Maybe break his mirror or something. No, they they, they were a little a little rough with him. Yeah. So <laughs> he, you know, that's when they they make their move. Shots fired. It was intense. It was an intense escape. <laughs> I really like that. And then that's where um, this is where it became a little problematic for you. Is after that. Or did you have any issues before? Because, like, I, I'm telling you, man, I was just, I was, I was vibing with this movie. So it could have, I, I really, really enjoyed it. I, so this is funny, us talking about it for the first time. Yeah. We both didn't really like Wrong Turn 2003. No. And both like this one. Yes. <laughs> this, this is how, this is a way a reboot should be done. Well put. And that's the way I'm looking at it. I'm not going when we're giving it uh, the canoes. Yes, I'm not giving it a five out of five. Sure, I'm not giving it a four out of five. No, I'm not going to tell you that this movie is going to change your life. I'm not going to tell you it's the. It is a fun watch. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to say like in horror re- reboots, top five for me. Wow, because it's such a hard thing to do. And I'm hoping that this is a one and done because it does flounder at the end. Yes. Whereas I wish it ended with the truck, you know, they escape with the towns guys and then it ends with like her being at home with him. End it there. Maybe like a little 
clip like you've got this whole foundation thing you've got something to build on yep you know if you wanted to make a sequel just leave it at that instead we are met with like a few weeks later normalcy she's got a little pregnancy tummy yeah so that's from you know smashing big boss Um, man the leader let me i just want to try and give these people credit let's see that gentleman the meanie Mm mm-hmm well, not not to start. That is Bill Sage. He plays Venable. Bill Sage is he from? Is he where is he from? All right, let's see. Bill Sage. He either Sage. did like a good non-existing accent. Yeah, he's from New York. I guess who isn't? However, right? he spoke was really unique. Yeah, like they gave them interesting speech. So he's he's known for Hap and Leonard. We are what we are. Even Hand, American Psycho. I don't know who would have been in that. Magnum PI, the TV show. Wrong turn. The Catch. So I, I don't know. I he was it was a good actor. Yeah, he did he a really was, good job. He was very creepy, very you know, firm. Mm-hmm. Like the way like the, a leader of some weird commune like that would be. Yes. But here's the kicker: is like where I wish like now she goes home, and there he is sitting in her kitchen with her i guess stepmom or mom i don't know i couldn't figure out that relationship they, I, I, he she was a lot younger than than the dad they the, played uh, i think it's stepmom but okay. they just didn't really say it yeah like the, there is a couple little bits of continuity issues with like the family dynamic and mm-hmm. the timeline but man like when he she goes in there she's sitting there and i'm like i would i dude i totally spaced on like the little girl that they first see in town And she's like, they try, like, that's another thing where it's like, they try and play it where it's like, she's building this relationship with this little kid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it didn't, eh, I mean, even though it ends with her and her, it's, it really wasn't vibing. Well, and that's the thing there were, so to kind of take it from there, it, there were some things that were unnecessary. Mm. You get a really cool false ending where if that was the ending, that would have been the shit. Uh, which which false ending? Because uh, uh, like uh, there's like four endings to me. <laughs> there is. So the one that I wish was just the end was her just bringing the plans to the dad, and then like maybe like a flashback or like a cut to the foundation, some something, and just letting it end there. But instead, it's like you know she first walks in and he's just like, I see you're carrying my child. Like and they play it off like, oh, you know, they're just down the street, blah blah blah. Like you know, and when she like goes, throws up, grabs the knives, and then like he he cuts the stepmom and the two brother like kills yeah. kills them both and then she kills him and she just stand there it's all bloody if that was the end you like that that would have been fine with me yeah but it was a false ending it was it always hurts so for me the, the ending it could it could have ended with them getting bailed out by the townsfolk and getting the hell out of there and then boom she's yay you know like I'm, yeah that would have been fine I'm, I'm here now i'm working for dad and you know my own person all that fun stuff and i have a great life but oh i have a great life but oh you know this this really messed me up obviously this was a a crazy period and, mm-hmm. and yes her boyfriend did stay he stayed so it, so that that could have that could have been an ending the first ending the one you like where she she comes home and in that house, yeah. there's Venable and the little girl, Ruthie, I think. Ruthie, that's it, yeah. Um, so they're both there. And then, yeah, that big fight scene goes down where Venable kills the family and she kills him. <laughs> Just <fucking> right. guts. <laughs> like it. So, no, scratch that. Then there's the... Yeah, it what, was all in her head. But he is really there. But he's really there with the little girl, Ruthie. So she's like, okay... I have the conversation. You're going to come with me. You're carrying my child. Okay. And, and uh, don't kill my family. Mm-hmm. And he says, fine, but you got to come with me. Yeah. And he's like, he's not even like cool about it. It's just like, he's like, and you're not going to be punished until we won't discuss punishment until after. Right. So it's basically, oh, you're going to come back. You're going to bear the child. And then you go to darkness. <laughs> right. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And and that's where I think it was a little bit inconsistent. Well, here's the, here's the other issue is that is they know how to drive. Right. You know, because then they get into the RV or tr- camper because it's smaller. So I guess you'd call it a camper. 
but, but so there's more to it. So I think that's what I'm hoping for. If they try and add a sequel or something to this, I'm hoping it's a prequel. Sure. A little more of the depth of the foundation with that, with that actor. It's just like, they, they probably will. I, I hope they don't. I'm, I'm with you in that. I just hope that this is, this is left alone. Yeah. It was, it was good. I enjoyed it. I, it is not five stars. No, it is not four stars. It's a, it's an, it's a smooth three. Yes. And I, and I stand, I was thinking two and a half just because of the length. And if you think of all the other films in the horror genre to, to, to go the full three, it's just like, okay, what's, what's in the same camp to me. But you know what? We have a firm rule in Red River Horror, so it's just like, dude, no halves. You're you're, you're gonna make it. You're either gonna make it a winner or a loser, yeah. and there's a big difference between a two and a three. Yeah. After watching it a second time, I had to watch it a second time while I st- it was a 48 hour rental. Okay, and I'm like, it's it's a three, three boats, three Absolutely. canoes. I mean, this this <laughs> I really like a clever reboot that's an actual revisioning not a retelling yes and what came out of this was something better than the first one with a more unique story it didn't rely on gore it had some but that wasn't the scary element of it that you know the gore part wasn't the part that scared you it was just no uh just a cause and effect and I was waiting for it. I was expecting that it's like, all right, so who's going to be the the odd survivor that's going to make it back to the road? Yeah. You know? It's just like these these kids are going to get picked off one by one. These little, you know, woke kids going into the woods, just being all cool. It's just like, all right. this that's how, gonna start, be, that's how it felt at the beginning. Yep. And it was standard setup. And it's like, whoa. I had no idea what we were in for. Exactly. Uh, and and from the the rolling log, that's that's a great just to anybody that watched the trailer, great payoff. Uh, yeah, the that whole here we go. Okay, it's just like every other one, mm-hmm. and then no, it's not. No, and I really that's something that I'm I give it all the credit for. Yeah, I mean, even you know, got to give credit to the person who wrote it, it was a uh, Alan uh, Alan B McElroy. Yeah. Uh, McElroy or McElroy, how? Sorry, Alan, because I actually hope to get him on the show. Because if I'm not mistaken, he wrote Halloween Four. Really? Yes. Yeah, Alan B. McElroy, director Mike P. Nelson. Great job. The direction. Yeah. Great job. Like, there's it's the little things in it that are what make it good. Mm-hmm. It just has just some great visuals in the woods the nighttime shots during the escape, like yeah. creepy vibes, a lot of the shadow play. Like there's a lot of stuff with shadows that you might not catch. Like, I don't know if you caught anything new the second time around. Um, not, I, I don't know if I caught anything new. I really wish I would have. Oh, here's the kicker. He wrote the first wrong turn too, so it's his own re- his own redoing of his own thing. Yes, which makes it even better. It maybe he maybe it was one of those cases. You, you know what? Given 15 years to think about it, I know I can improve this. Yeah, we we got to get him on. It, he's he's a, 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 Halloween four mm-hmm. and this. I mean, that's he's a, he's the, he's a reboot guy because there's people when we talk about Halloween four, some would tell you that that's the way you reboot. That's true. And Mike, <laughs> Mike P. Nelson, if I'm not mistaken, he was involved with the original Wrong Turn, I, I think. So, I mean, there's got to be something behind it because that first Wrong Turn in 2003 was so similar to a lot of the other horror. If it wasn't a Japanese horror, it was a cannibalistic type thing. Yeah. It was a total gore fest, and that was what you got. <laughs> yeah. And, like, even, like, oh, you know, give Wrong Turn... 2003 some credit because it was before things got over the top gory because it beat it was out before saw and hostile and it was so maybe you could say it was like the launch point for that but it's just and i think at that time 
I'm just trying to put myself in 2003. Trying to think of what was... So the ring was 2002. You weren't going to... I don't know if anybody was going to beat that. <laughs> the ring. No, but speaking of the ring, real quick. Mm -hmm. From the last episode, I sure. said the ring would make a great anthology series. Yes or no? No. No? Okay. Nope. Because the you need that final scare where she comes out of the tv okay for the whole movie to be effective okay i, I don't know like i don't know that i could feel that dread that i felt the first time i saw okay. that multiple episodes over yeah okay because you have to recreate that that terror yeah gotcha. that's just my, my personal no no that's that's fair that was that that was one that i disagreed with i'm like yeah yeah the ring um because because it's so reliant the, the ring was so reliant on the visuals. It was so reliant on creeping you out, but not giving you anything until that last moment. It's like, oh, oh, this is happening now. This, you know, that jerky movement and the, the, uh, the, the crawling and just kind of that, just getting closer and closer physically out of the screen. It's like, ooh, okay. So I think it all kind of built to that moment. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. yeah you know that's a i mean you're right i could just see i could just see it in just trying to come up with different scenarios <laughs> yeah. other than the popping out of the tv like other like how does the first person in the first movie how does the first person get killed you just see it afterwards right stuff like that mm -hmm. so but wrong turn was very surprising i would totally watch it again even though i know what happens yeah, I mean, if there was anybody when we put this out, and they're like, oh, I mean, I, don't, I mean, I listened to the episode, you know, I'm not, I don't care about it, but you know, if you want to, you know, make it turn it into a watch party, yeah, for sure. And it's kind of cool. I that's maybe thinking about it. Maybe we shouldn't have given spoilers, but we had to talk about it. We in had detail. to talk about it. It's just because now I don't know if you're going to listen to this episode. Will it entice you to watch it? Uh, I was too excited to talk about it with you to <laughs> yeah. to, to not be spoiler free yeah. like I, I i couldn't do that i mean i almost when we were starting i was i was just on a on a, a ramble of just how like oh man this happens on this happens. like oh i wanted to hear it and it like honestly the, there's those things that just very clever so just to kind of wrap it up you know about our first ever dueling reviews yeah. here uh we both gave it a three that is very very interesting we're on the same page very crazy because yeah. Cause yeah, you gotta once you get past three, it better be something. Yeah, like it's you're you're getting into serious territory, some big competitors. Yeah. So I think Wrong Turn will age well for me. I think that it's something that I can revisit the next time. This I'm is in a good woods. mountain movie. Yes, yes, it is, and it's got and I can't stress it, and I don't know how to fully describe it in pod form. Mm -hmm. But the tone of the film is so different from your run-of-the-mill slashers yeah. that are out. Now, granted, nowadays it is hard to make a run-of-the-mill slasher. I will say that. You know what the thing is, though? Like, it, it has that slasher vibe, but then it doesn't slash. It doesn't. Different. Just different. It, it's the exact same formula and then goes a different, different mm -hmm. angle. Yep. With just little twists, turn, like just little things that are just different. Yep, I enjoyed it. Yeah. I will I will watch it again. Just uh, an experience that I was not expecting. Now, did you watch this with your wife? I did. Now, what'd she think? She thought it was too long. Okay. I think we're all in agreement that it was too long. Yeah. Like, that was, that's the, if, if, man, it's one of those things where it's like, if you just, if it was shorter, easy for. The ending's what really killed it for me. Okay. Like, where it's like, um, the continuity and the ending just dragging where it's like just you know you had this really good thing with a two like a first act and a second act sure don't do a short third right then that's what happened mm -hmm. it did a brief third act rather than closing at the end of the second yeah and 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 I will be honest what's what's very strange kind of it's so funny us i guess just us two building up this movie from the time you watch the trailer yeah and i watched it and it's like all right we got to cover this now i'm curious all of the things that i 
didn't really care for back in the day. Now I'm almost curious to go back and watch hmm. the wrong turns because I randomly have, I don't know which number it is, wrong turn something left for dead. It's probably three or something. <laughs> that might be two. <laughs> you know? But but in in I, I accidentally, you know, once you go into Twitter, it's it's fair game. I didn't realize I would stumble across a really good movie reviewer's thoughts on the film in just a tweet. And they really liked Wrong Turn 2, and it's someone I respect that okay. reviews films. So I'm like, all right, maybe I should go back and watch at least one and then two. Like one again, then two, and see if I like them. All right, so Left for Dead is three. Okay. I have no idea why I have that. Never watched it, but I have it. Because yeah, originally the working title for this one was Wrong Turn, The Foundation. Oh, Which I'm glad that's not the title. Me too. I'm, be- I'm glad it's Wrong Turn mm-hmm. and a completely new direction for it. Yeah. And I really hope they build on the foundation, not by going forward, but by going backward. Because I think there's a really, there's some really good prequel opportunities in there. There are. Like going back to the 1800s. If you if you want, I didn't even think of that. Yeah, why wouldn't you? Why now? not? <laughs> now, take it from the beginning. Because I'm not wherever you want. Not a huge fan of when I see a movie like that and I enjoy it. It's like okay, leave it alone. It's done. Like I'll go back to it and I'll enjoy it. But naturally, if it makes money for them, there will be sequels. That's just a part of horror. That's the way it goes. So, if you can get anything from the first ever dueling reviews episode of the red river horror podcast you got to watch wrong turn 2021 you really do and i'm you know, i'm thinking that the next one's probably going to be king kong versus godzilla okay yeah the next dueling <laughs> reviews i think so well, let's do it and uh you know what i mean do we want to attempt what do you think should we go panel for that one are there enough godzilla king kong fans in our life to uh to do panel i'm sure okay i mean <laughs> I mean, I know, I know. Some, I mean, we have some regulars that would easily come back on. We could have Steve and Joe again. Yeah, they they would do it. They would both do it. And it would work out really well. Yeah, and and I I, I totally recommend if uh, Joe D from Different Take his YouTube channel, just really high quality stuff that he's putting out there. So if you're looking for some of his reviews, it's not all horror. Um, yeah, I mean, same with Keystone Retro, what Steve's Keystone got going on. Retro. He's got some pretty cool stuff going on in his store. Uh, I'll have to check with him because he had something scream. I saw a picture of it on Ooh. the Instagram. So I was like, Ooh. oh, we actually got to talk about that in Neato. a future episode. Scream? Yep. I talked about the Scream TV show that I never saw an episode of. Yeah. Did you ever bother with that on I MTV? Did. Oh, did you did? I did. Tell me. Uh, I couldn't finish season I, one. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. Yeah. Yeah, well, I'm just older, man. Back in TRL days, I'd be in. Look, man, they turned <laughs> the Archie comic characters into a teen drama that's dark. And, and we know people who like it, so. Sure. <laughs> so, all didn't, right. Didn't see that one coming. Three out of five boats for Wrong, Wrong turn, turn 2021. There will be an accompanying piece. Joe has written a little little, little bit, a little, little blurb, a little, little blurb, a little little detail into his feelings about the film i do as well so yes. this is well yeah this has been episode 32 of the red river horror podcast the first ever dueling reviews i'm eddie Kayazo, founder of red river horror if you want to hit us up red river horror at gmail.com joe that's all i got fantastic ed thank you very much i've been your host joe zakreski you can find me at red river joe on twitter and remember to keep traveling those channels of fear